Hello and welcome to uh, another show of Razgovori u Centru or the Conversations in the Center. Uh, I'll be your host for today. I'm Mislav, to everybody who doesn't know me. Uh, and with us today, we have a very special guest from a faraway land, as you might notice from our change in the language of choice. Uh, so today, Sebastian is here with us. Sebastian, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me here. So uh, in order for uh, everyone out there in the audience uh, to know a little bit about you and who is here with us speaking today, I would ask you to introduce yourself. Shortly. Uh, hi, my name is Sebastian Graça da Silva. Um, I'm mixed English Portuguese. Um, I'm a youth worker for, I'm from background. I've worked in this field for over 20 years. Um, I took my studies in this topic and I've been working in this field of like Erasmus and the previous versions of Erasmus um, for a long time. My first project actually was in 1997. Um, where I first participated in these programs uh, and I've gone on to deliver trainings in these areas and, and kind of specialize in these areas. Has youth work changed a lot in all of that time? In 20 years, yeah, yeah, a lot actually. So um, I'd say like the biggest changes I've witnessed in youth work in this time is that it's um, funders are looking much more for evidence of um, what they get in for their money so where before in youth work it used to just be about um, youth work, uh, young people's development and just kind of write in reports to say that we've seen the transition and growth. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it turned more into for this amount of money we'll have this amount of young people that will do this thing in this tangible period of time, they'll get a certificate and so forth. I mean it's, it's okay, you need to show evidence for your funding. The forever challenge of youth work has always been about um, evidencing that it does something. Yeah. And often that evidence, you don't see it for a decade or so. Um, and I guess like being around long enough, I see people coming back to me a decade later saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. I have a family and I've got a job and all those things. Thank you very much. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it can be kind of hard to quantify certain things. Like they may even have uh, far-reaching consequences and so on of what you do of all these different projects and so yeah, on. Yeah, I mean like anything in social field, like if you do this and this, will it result in this kind of situation? It's very hard to know and to quantify that. But we take like our best guess and we kind of know that like if you create these programs for young people to come and to build their confidence, to create projects, to do things, yeah, they, they build all of these kind of soft skills, which makes them far more employable uh, and, uh, and, and take them into kind of different directions and kind of have all of these hobbies and skills. And luckily, we still have projects like this that allow young people to also develop their intercultural competencies, right? So young, young people and youth workers um, to, yeah, to, to go to other countries to understand the different cultural realities. And so we're lucky to have projects like Erasmus that kind of pay for people to have this travel, to have this experience and to feel this sense of being European, right? By living and experiencing and volunteering or going on training courses and, and working with counterparts and going, yeah, actually, like, we're doing very similar things. It's great. Yeah, I, I, re I agree with that sentiment fully, like uh, traveling, experiencing different people, different cultures and everything, it tends to break our stereotypes some preconceived notions and so on, just sort of makes you experience the world and in the end does make you feel more of a citizen of Europe, but yeah. even a citizen of, of the world. Yeah. It, it gets harder, to, it gets easier to, to move around the more you experience. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, you know, we, we experience the, the challenges of what difference is as well. But this is the thing around creating a multicultural society, right? And so, you know, the more we experience difference, we can understand when people come to our borders, to our country and go like, oh yeah, I remember like traveling to them places and trying to find the food and trying to do this and all that. Yeah. yeah, it stays with you. But now let's address the elephant in the room. What okay. exactly was it this time that brought you here to us, to Karlovac? So I was invited to come and support this project that you guys is delivering here. Um, so it's called Revolutionary. Uh, it's a seven-day training program that looks at youth employability 
Uh, we've got participants coming from seven different countries um, who are together exploring some of the, the commonalities around um, employability for young people. So over the course of this, this training, we've started by kind of reflecting on some of the questions. We looked at the, um, the countries have looked at their national realities. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we've kind of looked at the commonalities. So we've gone and tried to, we're here in this um, city of Karolitz. So we're going around and exploring and seeing what are the challenges um, and expectations of young people to try and get employment. Um, and now we're uh, like five days into the project now. So we're, we're now exploring this area of like entrepreneurship, right, let's say. so. We can do lots of different things and people have been sharing from their realities around the different the different ways we can support young people and work with businesses and work with local authorities to try and support uh, employability but if we get to a position to a point where actually regardless of how much we do um, the jobs aren't there mm -hmm. so either these young people are going to go away and we experience brain drain or we find ways of kind of supporting young people to be entrepreneurs uh, within the community, so to kind of look at those kind of skills. And we're playing with that today by by creating a, a, a project that looks at like employability. And the, the objective of this really is to just kind of look and reflect on the type of skills that's needed to kind of support young people, to encourage them to do project planning, to do um, to consult with other people and, and, and do some market research on your kind of projects and to kind of present and to get feedback. And like all youth work processes, it's about, um, it's about the process, right? It's about experience in that, um, going through that motions. It's not the, um, it's not the, the destination, it's the, it's the journey, mm -hmm. right? With the cliche of that, but yeah. I mean, all, all that you described, it seems that, uh, that your participants of this project have quite, uh, quite a lot of things that they will cover uh, throughout this training. So from, you mentioned, uh, analyzing uh, their own countries and in what way the youth in their countries function, how they are with employability and so on, how easy it is to get a job. But they will even get a sort of view into how uh, Croatian youth or specifically Karlovac youth work and then they get to build bridges between them, see the similarities, the differences. Yeah. I, I really like that. Like, yeah, so it seems like a great thing to, to sort of... Well, the objective was to take people on this journey, right? Mm -hmm. To kind of like, just we sort of started with some tough questions, let's mm -hmm. say like that kind of reflected on employability, reflecting on our own situation, looking at a, a community in a country most people doesn't really know, right? But then like, how can we take that um, just, just kind of doing those things and, and kind of transfer it back to our own environment, if, if that's our ambition to go back and work with young people. And for some of the participants on the course, maybe it's more of a reflection of their own journey. If they're not specifically working with young people, they might be a young person on that journey and reflecting about like what they need to do in order to kind of make themselves more employable mm. and, uh, and, and build their skills. You know, I was just about to say, it seems like this uh, knowledge uh, has a, a lot of ways uh, in which you can apply them, be it in your own life, like, okay, I'm going to use this to find myself a job, to better myself and to better understand, like, what I should do, what I need to do to uh, accomplish something. But at the same time, you can use it uh, as a youth worker to empower young people, mm -hmm. to give them maybe some information and some guidance to point them in the right direction yeah. if they're feeling a little bit lost at times. There's a lot of transferability, mm -hmm. of course, and, and youth work is just about a collection of life experiences to try and, I mean, there is no clear life path, right? You know, there's just a collection of um, gaining the understanding and experience of others um, and to try and navigate uh, a path into, I don't know, being an, what we call an active citizen, I guess, right? Like mm. being a part of society. Um, yeah, yeah, it's nice. And I think we're just, yeah, we're really lucky. Like I think we've got a good, a good bunch of people that's come in to participate in the project that's, you know, they're, they're enjoying it, they're participating. I mean, the, you know, the project is, is 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 fifty percent like creating the structure and fifty percent like the participants like taking it and doing something with it, you know. So you can get projects where people come along and you know they're not really interested, but if 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 the participants are interested, then then 
then something really nice happens. And I think that we've got the, a good combination. So I think it's clear that we've got, got nice partners that have made nice selections. And um, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a good bunch. We're having a good time here. So for the past five days, uh, it, it, it has been good, like so far so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure everybody is getting to that point of being tired now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, of course, like we, we're doing things, we had a free day yesterday, we went to see well, uh, different parts of, of Croatia we went to explore. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it, it's going well. We've been participating a lot in the project. You know, and of course, people want to spend time and get to know each other. That's kind of the other side of the project as well. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's good. It's good, but I'm sure everybody's getting to that tired point by now. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, in, in my experience of trainings and these sort of things, even trainings that are a, a bit more intense, it, it, it's a long work schedule during the day. There's a lot to cover. That's a lot to do. Okay. Of course, we, we talk about it often here, like non-formal methods and so on. Uh, so not, not as boring as, uh, I don't know, ex cathedra types of uh, presentation, but still, uh, there, there, there's a lot to do, a lot to accomplish. So after a week, I can imagine that people can get... Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of group work mm. and, and people taking a lead on that. And, you know, and this is the kind of the classic youth work thing, right? Mm. Is that, you know, the, the, the true youth you know, they, there's a joke within youth work, like how many youth workers does it take to change a light bulb? None, you empower the young people to change it for themselves, right? <laughs> and so it's about like, as, as, as youth workers, you're in the ultimate position with youth work when you can totally step back and young people is running everything for themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and then eventually they're gone because they, they don't need you anymore. And so this is the point, you work with, with people who need lots, lots of support um, lots of time, lots of encouragement, and then they're away and they're creating projects and they're doing things on their own, and they're just coming like, hey, can you get me like this and get me this? Yeah, no problem. And then they're, they're doing things on their own. Mm. And then ultimately, that's it, they're off in the world. You see, now I understand why I saw some of your participants from the training outside in the world of Karlovac <laughs> doing things on their own, like yeah. interviewing people around the city, trying to figure out how yeah. employment works in Croatia. What's I mean, these are these are adults, right? So yeah. they're kind of, you know, so I think it's it's more about kind of looking at this process and, and transferring that to how, how you can do this process with young people, right? So, you know, to do kind of youth work, you kind of have to, you can only experience it. You know, so you have to kind of experience and go through that process and think like, okay, how can I do that with groups? How can I encourage? Or how can I train if I'm in a position where I've, I'm working with a team and I'm training them to kind of work with young people? How can I get them to experience something so they can they can pass that on and, and mold it and adapt it to, to, to their groups and thinking like where they are in terms of their confidence levels? Okay, so uh, I would like to ask, you said you had a, a bunch of experience in your life, you've been in youth work for a, for a very long time. So firstly, uh, is uh, like, this is not the first time you've been in Croatia, right? No. Okay, so there were other projects, I assume, and so, so on? So, yeah, I've been in... Yeah, I've been in Croatia like a few times, but like the, I, I participated with Carpe Diem in, I want to say 2016. I think I came and I supported them with a project in Zadar. Um, yeah, it was a really nice project. We really enjoyed it. So um, I was, we didn't contact for a while. I was in touch with Alex and uh, and they said, yeah, it's really crazy. We're doing a project at the moment. Do you want to come? Like, of course I want to come to Croatia. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was really nice to come back and, 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 and support and, and do more things with you guys. Um, but I've done quite a lot of projects in Balkans. Mm -hmm. So um, I got after this project in, um, in, in, in Zadar, I started to do my study um, and I, I did my master's dissertation um, about um, contact theory mm -hmm. and about how if we bring different uh, young people together, um, does it reduce prejudice? And so I managed to get a bunch of um, participants from all the ex-Yugoslav countries um, because we looked at that because of the the history of conflict here and how there'd been a lot of funding to kind of 
bring people together to kind of experience these kind of programs and had it reduce their prejudice and had it kind of um, bonded people together. And it was really nice to see that, yeah, overall the results was, was that like from, you know, Croatians going to Serbia or, or to Kosovo or to Bosnia or to all of these places that all of these projects were bringing people together actually and and it wasn't they didn't see each other for or oh, you're serbian you're kosovan you're whatever you're like oh you're my you're my friend that i met on this project and we had this great time because mm -hmm. we went to this place and blah, blah blah which is how the reduction of prejudice works right so that was really nice to kind of after experiencing some projects here to kind of really do a a bit of a deeper dive here in 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 these ex-yugoslav countries so they have a very special place in my heart actually. Mm -hmm. I always found it interesting how after a uh, few dozens of hours of true honest communication you can accomplish just this sort of melting of prejudices and discrimination like mm -hmm. even when people come to the sort of exchanges or trainings and so on just if they open themselves up a little bit yeah. it's it, it can do wonders yeah for and it's it's hard because you've got a lot of um messages in the media, you've got a lot of messages coming from, from the politicians that's kind of like reinforce and, and and for a lot of the for all of the young people that their, their parents experienced that mm -hmm. those those very hard times, right? Um, and for this young generation I feel and as each generation moves on, like that period of history gets further and further away. And hopefully the more contact that they're having with each other, the more that they can go well, this is media, you know, I, they're, this, they're gaining media literacy mm -hmm. and they're like gaining political literacy and going, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that this, I'm being taught this stuff, but actually my experience of going to Serbia, going to Bosnia, going to Macedonia, whatever, has been great. It's been really positive. I've had a really great time. I felt really welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, we sat there. Okay, we talked about it at the beginning, and then we were brothers and sisters, and it and it didn't really matter. Yeah, it, it's funny. Then you can go and challenge other people who are perpetuating some stereotypes and so on. Just sort of asking, okay, when's the last time you talked with a person from Serbia, yeah. Macedonia, or yeah. somewhere else? Have like, you been, have you been there? Yeah, have you been there? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, not for 20, 30 something years. Yeah, it's different. It's changed, yeah. And of course, and, and, and ultimately, like all people just wants to come together, right? But these political situations kind of like, you know, create this, 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 this border for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and when we're together, like, okay, we, we start and we see the, the characteristics and the borders and then like, Okay, they don't really matter, you know, because it's like it's it's that person, it's that but they're like this little, 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 and you you find that connection with them, and and that connection had nothing to do with the country that they were from. It's just like they're on my vibe, mm -hmm. right? You know, and like that. Yeah, you can feel the connection. Then it's a yeah, whole, yeah. whole other thing. Oh, I also would like to ask. It's something that that that, that I would like to know. Uh, during your years of youth work, you said you worked a lot in the Balkan countries and so on. Uh, is there a difference in sort of approach to youth work between the UK and the Balkan countries? Like when you observe even other youth workers and so yeah, on, yeah. or is it pretty much the same? Um, so the main, if I say from the UK, the main thing I notice is mm. the we're, we're very like health and safety conscious. Mm. Like we're very like I remember like starting to do these projects you know you're creating like a youth exchange you're going to do something you're working with i don't know participants from greece and you're like oh what's the what's the program today oh we're going to go like cliff diving and like the uk we're like, oh my god how do i risk assess this activity like like freaking out right um and yeah so i think that in the uk like um we're very concerned i think we're very concerned about risk and we're very concerned about being sued mm. basically um, and I feel that like um, when I come to countries like in the Balkans, it's not that they're not like mitigating risk, but they just kind of more trust that people is going to be okay and, mm -hmm. and things is going to be good and people wants to kind of help each other, oh. you know, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but I think generally the, the, the approaches, I mean, it depends country by country. Like, I mean, like if, if your country has any um, um, taught pedagogical approaches to 
youth work in like local universities or colleges because mm -hmm. uh, some countries have have something some have nothing whatsoever um, so it's a new thing so but they have programs like this where people can kind of share competent competencies and uh, and I think because it's been going for so many years in Europe that there is a, there is pretty much a common understanding mm -hmm. around what youth work methodologies is yeah yeah uh, I only ask because I haven't had the the opportunity to visit all of the nearby countries yet yeah. so I figured you know ask the question get a head start yeah I mean it really <laughs> depends like um, I mean, the money come, the money and the initiatives will come from the minist generally the ministries of education or the ministries of youth and sport, mm -hmm. and it's about what budgets they have and what kind of experience they have, and where they've taken kind of that experience and knowledge from. I mean, we have like a long in the UK, we have a long history of of, uh, of youth work, right? Um, but I think that Europe, the European countries have evolved in their own ways, mm -hmm. which is which is really great. Um, and yeah, I mean, we all know the situation from the UK. We've kind of gone off in our own direction. And there was a real feeling that like, because we started like developing a lot of these methodologies in the 1950s and 60s, um, which was great. And it was really ahead, ahead of a lot of other places. But, but, like, but countries in Europe have also, you know, they've developed maybe some at later periods of time, but they've gone in, in their own directions with it now. Um, and, and sadly, because of the decisions that the UK have made, they're going away from Europe, which is which, which is quite sad, and and not having these opportunities to come together and to participate in these great programs, mm -hmm. which do really create a lot of uh, tolerance and understanding between between people and nations. Of course. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Now, if you could. Uh Ha take one piece of advice concerning youth employment from this training if you have something what would you say to our viewers out there okay so um, young people aren't one homogenous group they all have their own different needs and support needs so what can you do to support young people to have the skills and confidence they need to go forward and live their lives with dignity whatever their background is whatever their situation is Cool. Sebastian, thank you very much. Uh, and okay. thank you uh, for, for listening and being a part of this moment. We hope we didn't, uh, we didn't bore you, but I know that we didn't. And, uh, well, have a, have a nice day and we'll see you again soon. Avala.